today we're going to talk about Faraday rotation or propagation along a magnetic field. In the last video, we derived the dispersion relation for plane waves propagating through a plasma. In this video, we will expand our discussion of plasma propagation effects by considering the effect of an external fixed magnetic field. Let's start the discussion with a brief examination of polarization. There are three main types of polarization. There is linear polarization, as well as two types of circular polarization. Right-handed, which is a polarization that winds clockwise, as well as left-handed polarization, which is characterized by winding counterclockwise. So the interesting part is, as we can see, a linear polarization is simply a combination of both types of circular spherical polarizations. All right. So polarization has four degrees of freedom. We call these degrees of freedom Stokes parameters. So our first Stokes parameter represents the total intensity of the polarized waves and is represented by the average of the squares of each coordinate component of the electromagnetic wave. Our second Stokes parameter represents the polarization along the coordinate axis. And this basically tells you which way the polarization is pointing, if it's along the x hat direction or the y hat direction. The next Stokes parameter tells us our polarization along the 45 degree line between the coordinate axes. And our last degree of freedom describes the circular polarization. So it's apparent that the properties of the waves propagating through our plasma will depend on the direction of propagation relative to the direction of the magnetic field. In order to continue our discussion of Faraday rotation, let's look at the special case of propagation along the direction of the magnetic field. So let's look at the case where we have linearly polarized light propagating through a cold plasma in the same direction as the magnetic field, which we will call B parallel. So let's first look at the force of this electromagnetic field on the electrons within the cold plasma. Both the electric field and the magnetic field exert a force on the electrons. This is just equal to the mass of the electron times the acceleration of the electron. Our electric field is just the incoming wave, uh, which we have said is linearly polarized, so it's the sum of, of both circularly polarized waves. And our magnetic field is just B parallel. So we have this first order differential equation and we want to solve for the velocity of these electrons. So we'll solve this as we normally do by guessing. We have our onslaught solution for our acceleration is proportional to th this exponential qu quantity here. And from this we get a steady state solution for the velocity. Where we can define our cyclotron frequency as the charge of the electron times the parallel magnetic field divided by the mass of the electron times the speed of light. We see that this result for our velocity is completely dependent on polarization because the velocity of the electrons is proportional to the incoming linearly polarized electric field. So now we have moving electrons. Specifically, we have circularly moving electrons. And these circularly moving electrons are going to create an additional magnetic field to the external one. So, remembering that the incoming linearly polarized wave is just a superposition of two circularly polarized waves, it's clear that there's going to be two cases here. The first where the new induced field is parallel to one of the circular polarizations, 
and it poses the other one. So this is going to change the dynamics of interaction for the incoming wave. Um, one of these polarizations is going to be slowed down and lag as the other one propagates through the plasma. In order to examine which type of circular polarization will lag behind, we need to look at the effective index of refraction of this plasma of moving electrons. Remembering the dispersion relation from the last video, we can relate our index of refraction to our electron's frequency. From this, we see which component of our linearly polarized wave will be opposed by the new induced field. The right-handed polarization will propagate more slowly, causing the plane wave to rotate as it propagates through the plasma. This is the effect we call Faraday rotation. The parallel magnetic field causes the plane wave to rotate through an angle, which we're going to call delta theta. So delta theta is related to the integral of the difference between the wave vectors for each polarization. So plugging in for the wave numbers, we get, and using the definition of our plasma frequency and our cyclotron frequency, we get, this integral is what we call our rotation measure. It's the integral along the path of the density of electrons times the parallel magnetic field. So going back to our original picture, we can complete the cycle. So remember, we had a linearly polarized wave propagating into a cold plasma, and we wanted to know what type of polarization wave comes out of that. From our Faraday rotation argument, that we know that within this cold plasma, the right-handed polarization lags. So the light that leaves this cold plasma is also linearly polarized, but with a new phase. So that's Faraday rotation. However, we'll notice that this rotation angle is entirely dependent on the frequency of the incoming wave. So the last thing I want to look at today is how that frequency affects the propagation of the wave through the plasma. The question is, through a dispersive media, which reaches you faster, the higher or lower frequencies? Remember that the index of refraction is equal to 1 minus the ratio between the plasma frequency squared and the frequency of the incident wave squared. A larger frequency means that the ratio between the plasma frequency and the incident frequency is smaller, so that means our index of refraction is larger. Therefore, the higher frequency waves will reach us faster than the lower frequency. Now for the fun part. The easy way to remember this is to be a good nerd and remember your Star Wars. Remember at the end of episode 4 when Luke's flying around in his X-Wing shooting lasers at everything? And by everything, of course, I mean the Death Star. Remember for a minute the sound those lasers make. So apparently the guy who did the sound effects for Star Wars decided to climb a radio tower back in the days when you wouldn't get arrested for doing crazy things like climbing a radio tower. And then he proceeded to beat the crap out of a guide wire with a hammer. <laughs> the resulting sound we hear is the high frequency waves reaching us before the lower frequencies. Let's listen to it one more time. I just think it's really cool that we can actually hear the dispersion effect. And it's a really easy way to remember the answer. So as a summary, the real science of this lecture was we took a look at different types of polarization, and then we used those to analyze what happens when a linearly polarized wave propagates through a plasma with a background magnetic field in the same direction as the incoming wave's propagation. From this, we derived our Faraday rotation angle as well as our rotation measure. And that's Faraday rotation.